Jenkins, you know if Professor Post will be back soon? In any moment now, Mr. Tanner. How do you do, Professor Post? Oh, good evening. Er, uh, morning. I mean, afternoon. Oh, oh yes, yes, yeah. I, I have read your papers on Aristotle. We will now have a complete survey. Well, uh, Professor Post, this is drag day, and can't we... Uh, we'll continue tomorrow. Oh, thanks, Professor. Good afternoon, Professor. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Jenkins. Everybody's happy and excited over the drag. Will you be going, sir? Oh, no, no. I'd rather sit here and read Aristotle. You know I'm lying, don't you? Yes, sir. The reason I'm not going is I wasn't invited. If you'll pardon me, sir. Your loneliness is self-inflicted. Being constantly lonely creates a sort of a, a, an inferiority complex. Ah, poor old Professor Ferguson was like that. He lived here alone with his nerves. Couldn't sleep nights. I don't sleep very well myself. I have twitches. Yes, that's what Professor Ferguson told me in this very room. The night he shot himself. Shot himself? Yes. In that very chair. I know because I helped to pick him up and lay him on that couch where he died. Professor, if you'll only go out and find life, you'll enjoy living it. Oh, but Jenkins, how often have I told you that that requires money? And I have saved in 12 years exactly $4,564.23. I'm saving that for a rainy day. Yes, sir. Poor Professor Ferguson said that. And it rained the day they buried him. I have thought of getting a broadening experience, but a person in my position can't very well uh, afford to indulge in whims. Uh, I'd love to rub elbows with the outside world and become a, a, a Napoleon. He was about my size, too. Yes, sir. I hope you'll forgive me, sir, but this letter came this morning. I was so occupied with the other gentleman that I neglected to leave it. Tis well.
Board. The train don't stay here all day. Hey, why don't, you, why don't you stop squawking, Reno? You're no god, ain't you? Oh, yeah? No wonder the show does only $42 last night. What the troop needs is a comedian. Say, where do you get that stuff? Didn't you hear them clap when I came out? They wasn't clapping. They was only killing mosquitoes. Well, how do you like them onions? Why, my gag schooled them. You can't say they didn't. You haven't got a gag that it get a giggle. Yeah? Well, how about this one? A guy goes into a second-hand store, and he says to the man, he said, is this a second-hand store? And the man says, yes. Then the guy says, well, give me a second hand for my watch. <laughs> if I was laughing, I'd stop. Well, I'm a mackerel without any fins. Yeah. I'll tell that little guy with the face. Come on. Good morning, stranger. Good morning. Uh, well, why must we be strangers? My name... I want to tell you a new one. A guy goes into a second-hand store, and he says to the man, Is this a second-hand store? And the man says, Yes. Then the guy says, Well, give me a second hand for my watch. <laughs> <laughs> Was he furnished with a second hand? <laughs> it's too subtle. It went over his head like a trapeze act. Say, here's one you can't miss. In Scotland, the movie theaters are billing Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde as a double feature. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Dr. Jekyll had double features. <laughs> Why, the guy ain't got no education. Come on. Don't you want to try another one? I hope it's not damaged. Oh, it's all right. I am Professor Timoleon Zanders Post, late of the faculty of Potts College. Gee, this is the first time I ever met a professor. You're an actress, aren't you? Well, I'm a dancer. What a coincidence. You know, I have made an exhaustive study of Greek dancing. How interesting. Pansy, come on, you're going to miss the train, Pansy. Oh, I I'll assist you. We need no assistance. Come on, Pansy. Come on, get aboard here. I'll make him translate that. All right, all right. Oh, <laughs> Oh, no. I'm going to Never again. I'm going to What's the matter, Tommy? Oh, come on, I've got to Look at me. Let me try to help you. Please. Yes. I could not do that. Please. I could not do that. That's it. Now we're set. She can't do Wait a minute. Tell that boy what to now you're all right. Now you're all right. Thank you. You take care of him for once. Turban. Pansy. Say, Reno, how about a little rummy? Okay. Hey, Tony, you want to play a little rummy? 
I got a hold of the baby. I got a hold of the baby. Fine. I gotta take care of the baby. Well, La Rosa, wash the face in the front. I, I don't mind holding the baby if the father uh, cares to participate. Fine, Professor. You hold him like this. <laughs> Thank you. You give him this, please. <laughs> what a break. What a break. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, play nice, please. <laughs> Jimmy, yeah. Play nice. Oh, Professor, Mario takes to you. You must have babies of your own. No, I have never been a father. But of course, I understand the fundamental principles of the thing. <coughs> <laughs> this guy slays me. Understand the fundamental principle. <laughs> Oh, Jimmy, can't you try and be a little refined? That's right, you're fundamentally correct. Jimmy, Jimmy. Stop the train, stop the train immediately. It's been a terrible oversight. Must be an accident. They forgot to put it on the train. What? You mean to say you held up this train on account of that trunk? Naturally. Well, get back on board. We're pulling out right now. Wait a minute. You can't do that. It ain't legal. This little guy has got a right to have his trunk. And why didn't you put it on? I never even seen the trunk. Oh, don't equivocate. What? What does he say? Don't equivocate. Listen, I don't take that kind of language from you or any other little run. That calls for drastic action. Uh, James, hold the baby. I'll give you one minute to apologize. What? Oh, Professor, keep your shirt on. Oh, I had no intentions of removing it. Please, you haven't got a chance against that big palooka. What's the matter, McCaffrey? What's holding the train? Why, that fellow that claims your trunk. Trunk? Nothing. You're 30 minutes late now. Pull out. You can't do that. It's a breach of contract. There's no check on his trunk. Well, what about it? This guy pays out his good dough, and as it is fault of a clock like you forgets to put a check in his trunk? Say, listen. I told you I never even seen the trunk. And anybody says I did as a liar. Now, what do you make of that? Them's five-fingered words. Hold the baby. Listen. The professor is my friend. You put the trunk on, I'll take the throat and squeeze the belly much like this. Am I burning enough? Now, come on. Am I burning enough? Just a minute. Check the trunk. Where's your check, professor? Check? What check? Your trunk check. I have no... You mean to say... You have to check it. Show him your ticket. My ticket? Oh, in my excitement, I forgot to purchase one. All right, McCaffrey. Wait a minute. You can't do that. It's unconstitutional. Unconstitutional or not, there she goes. Come on, Professor. Come on, will you? Oh, come on, will you? I got it. Come on, get on there. It's it. Where's the baby? The baby? Yes, the baby. The baby. Where's the baby? Well, Jimmy's got a baby. <laughs> Where's the kid? Where's the kid? Where's the kid? Holy mackerel, I forgot. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The baby. I know the animal who got me. Oh, who gave that stuff? Who gave that day? You? You or you? Who? I did. See, if you think we're going back after that trunk, you're crazy. It ain't the trunk, Chief. It's the baby. Baby? Whose baby? Yours? No. Uh, this is the father. Show him your check. The check? I got no check. No check? No, no check! Oh, no, no check. Oh, Come on, come on, get on this train. We don't want to be here all day. Yeah, take the train and get on the train. Hurry up, get on the train here. Let's get going. Think I want to stay here all day? Come on. Board! Come on, honey, what's the matter? 
Indeed, I, I've been made very happy by it. And I, I've been made most unhappy by it, sir. Well, Jenkins, what do you mean? Dr. Bolton, I've done an awful thing. Professor Post didn't inherit $750,000. He didn't inherit anything. I wrote him that letter. Jenkins, how could you do such a thing? I thought I'd help him, sir. He's been a very lonely man, no friends, no companionship, and I wanted to, to do it for his own good, sir. I am tremendously fond of him, but he's learned everything except how to live. Oh, I've done a terrible thing, sir. I wonder if you have done such a terrible thing. I wouldn't worry, Jenkins. He's drawn out his life savings, sir, and I hadn't figured on that. Forget it, Jenkins. Nothing very serious can happen to so conservative a fellow as uh, Professor Post. Here's my bus. Uh, goodbye, James. Goodbye, Professor. Hope we meet again. Lots of luck. Get on this bag. Oh, oh Professor, I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Pansy. We may meet at some future time, perchance. Uh, not perchance, fast chance. That's the worst of trooping. Pansy! If I should ever meet up with a friend and he should want to write me a letter, it would reach me care of the billboard. Which billboard? You know, Trooper's Paper, Cincinnati. I'll make a note of that. Someday you're going to miss this spot. Well, goodbye, Professor. Don't do anything I would. <laughs> What's her name? Who's name? The young lady. Pansy. Pansy what? Pansy Pete. When is the next train for Chicago? Well, there's a train tonight, about 9 o'clock. Thanks. Only trouble is, it don't stop here. Then I will have to go to a hotel. Is there a vehicle around? No. No, there's a bus, though. As a hotel bus makes the depot. Only trouble is, it don't run no more today. Uh, how far is it to the village? Oh, about two and a half miles as a crow flies. Only trouble is... I'm no crow. Uh, would you allow me to ride with you? You're darn cutin'. Hop right in. Thank you. 
there, sir. For the love of Mike, how did you get here? Oh, I was vibrated here in a most unusual vehicle. Indeed, I'm glad to see you. I'll see you after the show. Emilio. My heart is light. I dance. What do you think of that? Back, Professor, and give the folks a kick. A kick? Why? I thought they performed beautifully. <laughs> you slay me with your crack. <laughs> Come on back, Professor. <laughs> you murder me. <laughs> Come on, Professor. Get that thing. Oh, oh, Miss Pansy, uh, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed your dancing. Thank you, Professor. Yours was purely the uh, poetry of motion. Well, it's never been called that before. <laughs> in, in fact, the entire entertainment was uh, not only enjoyable, but instructive. I, I predict big things for it. Girls, come on. Now, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Lay off there, Jake. Nothing leaves this opera house. Who say so? Sheriff of Lincoln County. This here stuff's all attached. Bill for $250. Hotel tasting. You going to satisfy this attachment? Well, you see, Chief, what I want to yeah, do is... Yeah, that's enough. Come on, Tom. All right. Come on, gal. Flip it. Come on, now get off that trunk now. That's the law. Well, what's the matter, Miss Pansy? Oh, it's nothing, Professor. Really. But, but you're crying. Is, is it because of this uncouth fellow? Well, they're going to take our trunks away from us and everything. Yeah, well, I'm going to put a seal on them trunks. I'm going to put a seal on that door. Now, get uh, off that trunks, all of you. Uh, one on. moment, please. One moment. Your manner is very offensive, and I'm free to say I do not like you.
Tom, where are them see you? Right here, Sheriff. Don't start anything, Professor. Pipe down. You know you're not going to get the first base out and with a John Law. I repeat, I do not like him. James, pay this man and send him away. Yeah? With what? Us in the house just for 28 bucks tonight. I will lend you the money. You wouldn't clown with me, would you? That's beside the point. I wish to pay this man. One, two, a fifty. Correct. Thank you, Doc. Goodbye, folks. Come on, Tom. All right. Goodbye, Gail. Gee, Professor, that was a decent thing for you to do. Well, that's perfectly all right, James. Yeah, but what I want to know is how we're going to get to the next town. I guess we'll walk. Well, James, if you're in need of further assistance... Well... Don't you do it, Professor. You keep your money in your pocket. Say, what's the idea? I don't care. I think it's a shame to trim a stranger like that. He ain't no stranger. He's a pal. Well, he helped you out of one hole, and now you're willing to take him for more. I ain't trying to take him. No? Well, how will he ever get his money back? I got it. Professor, to show you that I'm on the level, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you take over the show and manage it. But I know nothing whatsoever about the uh, show business. Well, who does? That's what makes it a great game. It's packed full of wallops. It would be a broadening experience. You said it. Running a show is one of the most broadening experiences there is. But unfortunately, I am going to New York. My trunk is on the way. I have the solution. I'll go to New York and take the show with me. Oh, you mean to say you're going to put this in the Broadway theater? Why not? It's an excellent show, and I like it. Can you swing it? I mean, you got the mazuma? The what? The sugar. I mean the kale. You know what kale is, don't you? Yes. Kale is a vegetable resembling a cabbage. Listen. What I want to say is, have you got the kush, the copex, the O'Day, the cartwheels? Can someone tell me what he's trying to say? He, he, he's trying to ask if you've got enough money. <laughs> well, I don't know. I only have 750,000. 750 grand? <laughs> grand what? Don't let's start it again. We will embark on the first train in the morning. Gordon, oh, Jimmy, oh, Jimmy! Jimmy. Uh, hey, you don't pick that drop up in the middle. That's big time stuff you handle. Next stand's New York. New York. What a town. Broadway. What a street. Boy, I've been waiting for years to get a crack at them Broadway bozos, and now I'm set. I know darn well I can do it out Broadway, but can Broadway do it out me? I'm sorry, but uh, out of the I way. would suggest. Oh, yeah, Prof. Morning, everybody. Morning. Oh, oh J uh, James, uh, we've been uh, waiting for you. Uh, Mr. Rayburn has seen our entertainment. I have seen your show, but not your entertainment. Well, what did he mean? Oh, he's kidding. Oh, I'm not kidding, Professor. Broadway stands for a lot of baloney, but it will never digest a piece of tripe like this. Uh, I don't understand. Oh, I suppose not. Then I'll try to make myself perfectly clear. After 30 years of stage directing, this is the worst show I have ever seen. I went over all right, didn't I? Oh, you'll be all right after I've toned you down and polished you up. Well, I think James is exceedingly funny. Say, I killed him in Clay Center. Yeah, well, in New York, it'll probably be the reverse. Are you incinerating? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm willing to take over this show, but it's got to be built up from nothing. So we'll start with him. We've got to build and build and build till we put some sense into the thing. What about comedy? Why, well, we could take something from the Greek. What Greek? Why, well, Aristophanes is very humorous. I never caught his act. But there's a million Greeks in New York. 
I'll take something from him. What are you talking about? The professor wants to take something from the Greek. I think it's a great idea. We've had Chinese, Hawaiians, Shevashavlapins. Why not the Greeks? Well, all right, all right. Now, another thing about uh, Miss Peets, I'm afraid Broadway is not quite ready for you. Meaning, of course, that I'm not quite ready for Broadway. Oh, I'm afraid you won't do. Won't do what? She won't do for this show. Her style of dancing went out with his jokes. This piece dances unusually well. Well, I'm sorry, but the audiences won't think so. Oh, he's right, Professor. It's okay. I'll bow out. That's the way to talk. But that's not the way to talk. Uh, Miss Pansy, uh, I insist that you remain with us. In fact, it was your artistry that decided me in giving financial support to this company. You shall dance as planned. Oh, it's one of those things. Well, why didn't you tell me in the first place? It's all right, Professor. It's all okay. I got you now. I got you now. <laughs> it's all right with me. <laughs> uh, did he mean that? Yeah. It's an old Greek custom. Mr. Rayburn. Ginny, just a minute. Say, Jimmy, don't you think we ought to give this thing up? Give what up? This show. You know we're not good enough for Broadway. Don't be funny. Everybody has to start, and that's what we're doing. Yes, but it isn't fair to make the experiment with the professor's money. He's taking the chance, not us. Say, he's getting a kick out of this. He's having fun. Suppose he did lose 60 grand. He's got 750. Uh, uh, Miss Peets, uh, uh, Mr. Rayburn wishes you to report at the rehearsal hall. Uh, I have enlightened him. And he now has a keener appreciation of your dancing. Oh, Professor, you... Gee, you're sweet. Well, what did she mean? There's something about you, Professor. There's something about you. Where is the guy that's putting on this brawl? Who wants to know? Eleanor Spare, the personality girl. Miss Eleanor Spare and personality. Uh, send them both in. Get a load of that. Big time sex appeal. Is there any truth what they say outside? That there's a million dollars behind the show? There is not. I thought so. The regular hooey. There's only 750,000. Oh, Professor. I hope you'll excuse me for asking questions. But after all, a young girl has got to know who she's doing business with. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Hey, what Broadway show were you with last season? Uh, the Sunrise Supper Club. Say, I put that saloon on its feet. Made it New York's hottest night spot. And when I first went there, huh, it was a speakeasy. Speakeasy? Yeah, speakeasy. Speakeasy. You have unconsciously committed a, a solecism. You should purify the verb and say, speak easily. Speak easily? Speak easily. It's here. It's here. It's here. Has something arrived? I'll say it has. The title for our show, Speak Easily. Oh, pretty good. What do you mean, pretty good? It's perfect. Speak easy. Oh, but Professor, to get back to me, I've got everything. Everything? And you know, I got medals for acting when I went to finishing school. Oh, what finishing school did you attend? Um... Notre Dame. Notre Dame? Notre Dame is not coeducational. Uh, <clears throat> oh, well, uh, I, I was very young. <laughs> and you know, I can not only troop, but I can wear them. Wear them? Yeah, uh, what I mean is tight. You know, uh, I got legs. I, I assumed as much. <laughs> Assume nothing, say, get an eye full of this. 
Professor. Sign her up, Professor. Like this, get away from you, Professor. She's great, I'm telling you. If you see this man, well. He... music for the rowing number. The rowing number? Yeah. <laughs> I wrote that this morning. Get a load of this melody. You, you wrote that this morning? Yeah. It's something they remember. Yeah, I remember it already. You know, Come out of the theater whistling that tune. They'll go into the theater whistling it. It is slightly reminiscent of singing in the rain. No, this is different. Well, Professor, how is that? The song is very good, but the dance is anachronistic. A what? The postures and movements are not early Greek. No. I will show you the dance as performed in Athens. Young ladies. Follow me. Da 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 It's here. It's here. It's here. Has something arrived? Has something arrived? I'll say it has. A tune. A melody. Professor, Professor, you're marvelous. You inspire me. This tune came from the depths of my soul. Get a load of this. We can't consider it. Why? That's O Susanna. <laughs> it won't be after I'm finished with it. But that's plagiarism. No, that's Speak Easily, the theme song for our show. Just a minute, Jamie. Just a minute. I think I know what the professor wants. Does it go something like this? That's something like it. Only there should be more sinuosity of the hips, such as a. Oh, you mean like this? <laughs> now that is authentic. Uh huh. But it would be much more effective if you were in the nude. <laughs> professor, Professor, that's out. No nudes. But James, it was done so in Athens. Yeah, they might get away with that in Athens. That's a college town. <laughs> oh, Professor, I think I can do the dance for you. And I've got just the costume. Well, a little bit here, you know, and, and the beads there. In my dressing room. Now, come along and I'll show it to you. It's the darlingest thing you ever thought. There's not very much to it, you know. It's just right across here and there's a few beads right there. Oh, Professor, I'm this way. Oh, you see, this is a lot. You know, I've been wanting to talk to you for a long, long time. We should have some place where we can just sort of uh, get together and talk things over. Why, we already have such a place. My office. <laughs> oh, Timmy, don't be still. And I was thinking that I would give you the key to my apartment. So that when you felt like it, you could just run up and we could uh, have a cup of tea. Very well, if I should ever feel the need of a cup of tea. Oh, of course, I won't be able to pay for the rent right off the start. That is, until the show opens. But if I were to send you the bill, you'd take care of it, wouldn't you, Timmy? That's customary? All right, everybody, out for the trio. Oh, Timmy. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh.
Professor. Oh, 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 good afternoon. What have you been doing with that affair, woman? We had a business conference pertaining to the uh, rental of her apartment. Did she ask you to pay her rent? Yes. Oh. That's something I neglected to do. I didn't know it was customary. Professor, you come inside a minute. I want to talk to you. She kissed you, didn't she? Oh, yes. You know, she's a very appreciative girl. Well, did you kiss her back? Kiss her back? Oh, you know what I mean. Did you return her kiss? No. Is that customary? Oh, never mind. What else did she do? Why, uh, she generously gave me the key to her apartment. Oh, she did. You know, one would hardly expect such hospitality in a big city. Oh, Professor, don't you understand what she means? Oh, yes, yes. She told me that any time that I want to come to her apartment, I can have a cup of tea. Oh, well, I'll tell you what you do, Timsey. Any time you feel the need of a cup of tea, you come to my apartment. You know, I prefer cocoa. Come in, Timmy. Make yourself right at home. Oh, Marie! 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 Oh, dear, those servants, you just can't keep them. You don't mind if I do this myself, do you? No. Oh, come, Jimmy. Come, come. I'll take your hat and your umbrella. Oh, it's a coat. There. Now sit down. There. Now, while we're waiting for my brother, we'll have a talk. A real intelligent talk. Because I've got a mind. Yes? Oh, yes. I can hold the interest of a man like you. Tell me, Timmy, have you ever seriously thought of marriage? Yes. That's why I'm single. Oh. Well, supposing we have a nice little drink, eh? Oh, thank you. I never drink. Oh, I know, but a little Tom Collins won't hurt you. Uh, what is the nature of this, uh, Thomas Collins? Oh, um, it's sort of like, uh, lemonade, only it's made from limes, and a dash of that, and a dash of that. Sort of like a fruit compo, you know? Very nice. Sort of radiates a glow. Oh, Timmy, and that's what you need, a glow. Timmy, I'll slip into something more comfortable, and I'll be right back. Oh, no, no, no. You stay right here. I won't be a moment. Well, I'm back again, Timmy. You want to take a bath? <laughs> you can. 
can crack wise, can't you? I can pound a little drink for you. Hmm. Well, here's to you and me, Professor. You must never catch something with glasses, honey. No. Take a big, deep breath. Oh, honey. Hmm. Everything's all right now, isn't I, it? I don't honey? understand you. Oh, it's funny. You'll pay the rent, won't you, honey? Huh? Rent? And then, yes, the rent. And then, when you and I get around to it, why we'll be married. Thank you. 
<laughs> Honest, ain't it a wow? Jimmy Dodge and Pansy Pete's on Broadway. Kid, I always said we'd get where we belong. See, Jimmy, I'm all trembly. It don't seem possible. That's a swell profile of me, ain't it? Yes, Jimmy, it is. Every inch of it. The whole thing seems like a dream. Gee, I hope nothing happens. There you go. You dames are always looking for trouble. What could happen? Is Professor Post here? No. We're waiting for ourselves. Who are you? Well, I'm from his lawyer's office. I've got to see the professor right away. What about? Well, about a mythical inheritance of $750,000. Mythical? What's that, Pansy? Mythical is something that doesn't exist. You mean a $750,000 that the professor's got, he hasn't got? That's just what I mean. We've made a complete investigation of the professor's claims, and he hasn't got a dime. Gee, mister, you sure brought us some sweet news. And we're opening tonight. You mean you were opening tonight? Oh, Jimmy, we've got the professor in an awful fix. Since early this morning, we've been bombarded by people trying to collect for scenery, shoes, and costumes. Listen, pal, if the professor's broke, there's only one chance for everybody to get their dough. Let the show open. It's bound to click, and then we can pay off. Can't you do something? Oh, couldn't you? You know what I mean. Stall them off until after opening night. Well, there's only one chance. Get the professor out of the state immediately. Tell him to go over to Jersey for a little while. I'll do it. But remember, if he shows up at the theater tonight, somebody's going to slap an attachment on him, and your curtain never will go up. I knew it couldn't happen. It was too wonderful. Poor professor. I wonder where he is. I went by the hotel, and they said he hasn't been home all night. Good heavens. I'll bet he went for that cup of tea. Cup of tea? Jimmy, he's with that spare woman. He's been there all night. Yeah? I'll get him. Buck up, kid. I'm gonna get the professor, he's gonna get Jersey, and Broadway is gonna get us. What are you doing here? Oh, I remember. You spiked my drink last night. What happened after that? I don't know. Oh, oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. After a girl loses her reputation, she ain't hardly got anything left. What are you going to do? I can apologize. Oh, Timmy, do you remember saying last night that if a gentleman compromised a lady, that he had ought to marry her? Oh, it's my brother. What are we going to do? Uh, maybe I can apologize to him. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Here, get in there, quick, quick. Don't stall, Nell. There's a man here. He's been here all night. Oh! Oh, Nell. Nell. What would Mother say? I didn't think you were that kind of a girl. <laughs> well, I've always acted like a lady. And when a gentleman spikes your drink, well, what are you going to do? James. I 
like him. No, no, you mustn't. Come out. If you don't come out before I count three, I'll shoot. One, two, three. Put that gun away. Don't shoot. I'll marry you. Nell. Oh. Who are you? I'm a gentleman with scruples. And I'll marry you. Nell. Shut up. Say, who's making a sacrifice, you or me? And what right have you got to interfere with this girl's happiness? Honey, take all of me. Reservations. Morris. Yes, three. If you prefer it, I'll go. Gee, that's great. Come on, Professor, get right in. Uh, oh, James, uh, uh, I'll see you later at the theater. Yeah, yeah. See you later at the theater. Here, take him to Jersey and keep him there. Okay. Go ahead, step on it. Don't forget it now. Bring it here where it belongs and stay around where I can yes, find you. Mr. Redbird, what's the matter? I haven't got my thing. Your what? My thing. Your thing. Well, what is it? Am I a mind reader? I can not do you could tell. Yes, I know, but tell me what you... Reno, Reno, Reno where are you? Yes, Please. Mr. Redbird. Take this guy and find his thing, whatever it is. I you know. I'll get your scarf. I'll get anything. Come on. What's the matter? Have you seen my dressing room? What's the matter with your dressing room? You should take a look at it and then ask me what's the matter with Am it. Am I supposed to rebuild the theater? Oh, how do you expect me to keep my nerves you... on? People on this side of me, people on that side, and Miss... me giving a performance You tonight. have got the best oh. dressing room in the... I might have... Uh, Reno, Reno, where are you? Mr. Reno, Reno, take Mrs. Fair and give yes. her the star yes. room, the star I room. Don't forget. Yes. I Listen to me, I had a tough night. <laughs> Oh, boy, they're pouring in. They're pouring in. Gee, it looks like a sellout. If they don't give a good, smooth performance tonight, the show might get by at that. Sure we will. Yeah, yeah. Say, who's that guy over there with the derby on, that fat-footed fellow? What's he doing in here? I knew something was going to happen, but I'll take care of him. All right, all right. Come on, girls. Was you wanting something, mister? Yeah, where's the manager of this show? How do I know? Well, you'd better find him. Here's an attachment. Joint action, amount $10,000. $10,000? <laughs> A mad baggage fell. Why, Professor Post will pay it the minute he gets here, if you'll just sit down and wait. I ain't waiting, young fella. I've got an injunction, and I'm going to close this show. Yeah, I know, mister. But you can't serve that paper on me. You gotta serve it to the owner of the show. That's what I'm asking you. Where's the owner? I'm telling you, he'll be here. Now here's a nice chair. Just sit down and rest your feet. Don't hold me, don't hold me, but we gotta get the show on or it'll be stopped before we start. Well, what's the trouble now? It's the law. Oh, Jimmy, right back where we were in Vicious Swiss. Yeah, but keep your equilibrium. He's going to serve the professor, and the professor is in dear old Jersey. <laughs> Here, I told you girls to stay off that piano. Stay off the furniture in this place. 
geography of the city. And I said at the... That man. I will not permit strangers backstage. I'll eject him immediately. No, no, Professor. Come on, will you? Get in there. Be here any minute if you just sit down and wait. What kind of looking guy is he? Oh, tall man, blonde, dark glasses, and he walks with a limp. On account he's got a wooden leg. Oh. Get out of my way. What are you doing here? I told the professor to fire you. Listen, Miss Bear, I'm warning you. You leave the professor alone. Why, we're going to be married. If I didn't know you were lying, I'd shake the silly little head off you. I'll do it anyway. Stop it, you little fool, you. Professor! Professor! She's gone crazy. That's uh, Miss Pansy. Uh... Oh, you little nitwit, you. All right. Ready. Stop beyond your toes. Stop beyond your toes. All right, flash them. Bring it away. There was many things happening last night, but that woman means absolutely nothing to me. You're not going to marry her? Certainly not. Oh, Timsy! Lord Chesterfield said, an honest error is to be pitied and not ridiculed. <laughs> Ring down the curtain. Ring down. Ring down nothing. Keep waiting that curtain, you. Can't you hear them laugh? Of course they're laughing. They're kidding the show. They're not kidding. They think the professor is part of the show. Oh, you're... Now, young ladies, uh, just line up that part where we uh, do this. Just continue. Get that piano on, Reno. Get it on. Due to my unfamiliarity with stage procedure, there has been a slight departure from routine in this part of the entertainment. Oh, Drop the drop down. The drop. With your kind indulgence, we will continue. Wow. 
Why is it every time that I go places, someone always picks on me? Tell me, what's the psychology of that? Why, only this morning I took a walk with my family of ten children when a cop comes up to me and says, under arrest. I said, for what? I didn't do nothing. He said, you must have done something with that crowd following you. And that's not all. Why am I always snubbed by pretty girls and debutantes? I know I'm not good looking, but what's my opinion against thousands of others? And to add to my humiliation, last night I went into a drugstore to get myself a drink of pop. Went out of a clear sky and for nothing. A guy comes up to me and hits me on the head with a bottle and said, consider yourself launched. Was I amazed? Look here, Professor, you've got to keep off that stage. You're putting this whole show on the fritz. I, I was only trying to repair the damage I had done. Keep off that stage. Get me? Mr. Rayburn, I shall do my duty as I see it. And if you dare to interfere, I will expel you. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Thank you. 
the owner of this show. I am. <laughs> oh, boy, you're great. You got a funny comeback for everything. <laughs> Say, I, I put a lot of comedians, but you wear the funniest clothes I've ever seen. <laughs> What do you suggest, Rito? What? what? We could put him up in a fly gallery. Huh? It's a great idea, Professor. <laughs> Professor, I want to be sure that you get a good view of this bicycle race. Yeah, we want to get your reaction, Professor. Yes, I want you up in the flies. You want me up in the flies? Yes. Well, I'm already well up in domestic insects. Oh, no, no. I want you up in the fly gallery. I want you to get an uninterrupted view of everything that goes on, you see? That's very thoughtful of you. Yeah, yes, I just thought of it this minute, just this minute. That's just like Mr. Rayboyne, Professor, always giving somebody else a break. Yeah, Come right on. up there. Yeah, what's up there now? You can right see up, this. Right up, Reno, tie him to something. Yes, Mr. Lloyd. Come on, Come on, Where's the spare? Come on, Professor. Come in on that up there, Professor. Get busy up in those high altitudes. Here, hang on now. Come in. Here. Get right out of the What are you doing here? Get over where you go. Come on. Where's Jimmy? Where's the spare? Reno. He can't win. He can't win. I've got the bicycle fixed. Oh, father, father, you must win. You. Let him pass it, Charlie. Let him pass it. Yes. Father, father, what a fight. What a fight. It's play a play.
ladies and gentlemen. Nice. Hey, listen to them, they're still applauding. Oh, it's a smash. It's a smash. Well, listen, Raymond, you double-cross me. Why didn't you show me all this stuff in rehearsal? Well, yeah. Why didn't you tell me the professor was a comedian? But I don't... Where is Post? Oh, out there, somewhere out oh, there. there. Out there, right. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Didn't I tell you we'd knock him dead? Mr. <laughs> Billingham's looking for you, Professor Post. Mr. Hey, Billingham. What do you mean? Is this Post? Yes, yes. When you say so, I've been looking for him all night. Are you T.G. Post? Yes. What do you mean, a tall guy? Can I help him to be shrinks from process servers? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about this injunction? Ten thousand dollars in cost. Are you going to settle it? Uh, James will take care of the matter. Here he is, Mr. Billingham. Uh, congratulations, Professor. Congratulations. You fooled me all right, but you got a hit. But don't let it go to your head. Uh, come on, I want to talk business. Uh, 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 this gentleman comes first. Oh, all right, all right, I can wait. But remember, don't sell the show till you get my figures. What about the $10,000? Oh, don't listen to that piker. 10000 I'm talking regular money. 100000 100000 for a half interest in the show. Now, what do you say? Take it. Take it. I accept. Take fine, fine. I'll have the contracts made out the first thing in the morning. Good night. Good night. What about our account? Are you going to settle it or not? Mr. Billy and Ham, our junior partner, takes care of the small details. Hey! Hey, you! Oh. Uh, Miss Pansy. We're in, we're in, we're in. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Please, do something. One end, two end. Then everything is all over. I know find my thing here. Now, wait, wait. Let us settle this definitely. What is it you are looking for? My please, my thing is... All right, boy, what is it? It ain't on the prop list. Ah! Ah! That's my thing! That's my thing, Reno! 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 That's my thing! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but what is it? That you put him in the mouth! going to have to do plenty of explaining. I am fully aware of the fact that the events of the past few minutes have not been of a strictly conventional order. Therefore, I feel it necessary to clarify a situation which otherwise might be filled with doubt. This I will do through the medium of a much quoted but pungent phrase. That's to you. <laughs> <laughs> 